What's going on, crypto traders and investors? It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on The Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ Stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Today is Friday, February 23rd. Happy Friday. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Flare Networks. We're going to take a look at the FLR chart. We'll take a look at some technical analysis. I'll give my thoughts and opinions on what to expect in terms of price action in the days, weeks, months ahead. And we'll take a look at the bullish continuation pattern that just confirmed. That would be in an ascending triangle. We'll take a look at the price target and measured move on on what we can expect for upside, but up over 22% currently on the day today. So this is great to see. Before we get to it though, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a great way for you to support the channel for free. And I appreciate and love each and every one of you who have supported me along the way. Also, for those that are new, tick the bell. You can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff. You'll be notified on any future videos. Also, you can follow us over on X, which is formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at group pal. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And full disclosure, I do own FLR in my portfolio. And this is never financial advice. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only. Never, ever, ever buy or sell anything based on anything that I say or anything that I write. I mentioned this on one of my previous live streams that FLR was a potential ascending triangle. And this is just a bullish continuation pattern where we have a series of higher lows and a horizontal line of resistance. You can see uh, you usually break to the upside. And it doesn't mean for sure we're going to break to the upside, but more often than not, we do. And then there's also, you can draw a descending triangle, which if we grab our brush tool here, it would look something like this, right? With a series of lower highs and then a horizontal line of support. And then usually those break down bearish. But in this instance, it was a horizontal line of resistance and a sloping support trend line, which gives you that series of higher lows, right? And then generally those break to the upside. And then if you want your measured move, you just grab your trend line, go from the low to the high of that ascending triangle and you take that measured move and you move it out there to that horizontal uh, neckline essentially and then you got your measured move and it's saying we're targeting about 0 0.0457 so uh, just over four and a half cents it's looking well we're very close to that target if we just move that out here so we can see you can see here we are very close to that target we're only about eight percent away so we could see a little bit more upside we have to be cautious though because we are daily overbought and if we zoom out to the weekly time frame as well we are now heavily overbought on the weekly time frame we're sitting at 85 anything over 70 is considered overbought and anything 30 and below is considered oversold we have no weekly support either nearby realistically we have no weekly support down to 10 uh, to, to a one penny so this moves all coming off one penny and this is USD. And then if we just go back to the daily time frame, we can see here we don't really have any daily support down to about 3.2 cents. And then next major support sitting there at around 2.7 cents. And then all the way down at 2 cents. So uh, it's looking like we could see pretty sizable pullback. Once we do pull back, don't be surprised if we pull back 20, 30%. At this point, if we were just to start weekly consolidation, we haven't consolidated on the weekly time frame. Realistically, it's been all the way since back here on the week of November 20th. So it has now been 91 days or 13 weeks in a row where we haven't seen any real weekly consolidation. And then that just means that we're losing the low of the previous weekly candle. So if we start weekly consolidation, it's a very simple statement. Once we lose the, lo the low of the previous weekly candle, we'll start something that we haven't done in multiple months in 13 weeks. And we'll more than likely see a massive pullback. So if we were to lose the low of this week at 3.2 cents next week, that's the most likely scenario, I think. I don't think we would do it this week. It's it's a possibility. We'd have to lose the low of last week, though, at 3.08 cents. So uh, at this point, I think the most likely scenario is that we maintain that support, and then the low of this week will be in play next week. But again, if we don't lose the low of this week next week, then we just look at the low of next week the following week after that, right? And then once we lose that, we start weekly consolidation, and we'll more than likely expect a 20-30% pullback. But if we were just to lose the low of this week next week, let's say, and backtest EMA 12, that'd be a 17% pullback, and EMA 26 would be a 31% pullback. But we're in a weekly uptrend with a low, high, higher low, and higher high. Essentially, from current levels, we could pull back 75% and still be in a weekly uptrend. So that is some perspective on, you know, don't be surprised if we pull back 20, 30, 40%. It's what to expect when there's no nearby support, right? And what goes up must come down. Like I said, we're heavily overbought as well. So in this instance, this is one of those scenarios where you don't establish support on the way up. Don't be surprised if we pull back 20, 30, maybe even more percent from here. It would just be healthy and we would still be in a weekly uptrend. We also had a weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross, which is the first time in history. You can see here they were just getting established and coming off of 0 0.008. 
and heavily oversold conditions here on the weekly time frame. You can see here that that was just getting established and we saw the first ever weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross. And from that bull cross actually happening, we went up another 150% essentially. So now we're gearing up where we could potentially see a first ever bear cross of these weekly EMAs. And if that were to happen over the next few weeks, we'd probably see a pullback down to around two cents again. But I'm super bullish on Flare long term. I actually just got my Flare airdrop yesterday. So if you're on Uphold, if you're not using Uphold, uh, it's my one of my favorite exchanges, if not my favorite exchange. Uh, it, it's a bit, it's a great place for you to buy Flare, Songbird. You can buy XRP there as well. Tons of other altcoins. But essentially, what I do as a Canadian, I usually buy on Well Simple, or I buy like I connect it to my bank account, so I add actual Canadian dollars to Well Simple, or I add it to ShakePay. There's links for Well Simple and Uphold as well in the description, and then I send that money to Uphold, and then I can transact there and buy different altcoins, right? Because they have a lot more options. Um, but you can buy XRP on Well Simple as well, but you just can't buy FLR. So. That's what I do is I transfer it to Uphold and then I hold my FLR on Uphold and they automatically give you the airdrops. So each month on the 22nd of each month, I get a few thousand FLR just for holding the token. So yesterday I got a few thousand FLR and then today I woke up to plus 22% and I ended up selling the amount that I got in an airdrop and bought more XRP with it. So uh, looking for XRP to be one of the best performing um, coins as well in this alt season that I think we're just starting. So like I said, I would expect a pretty sizable pullback on Flare, but that would just be to be uh, expected. And then in terms of the monthly time frame, if we go from our high to the low here and we take a look at our FIB extension levels, this is something that I like to do with regards to price discovery and new all-time highs and blue sky breakout. If we you know, break out to new all-time highs and we don't have any prior resistance from the price action, then we look at different metrics for you know determining where we could potentially go in a new price discovery mode. And something that I like to do uh, to use to determine that is the FIB extension level. So if you just grab your FIB extension or your FIB uh, tool here, you go from the high there to the low. You can see here that you get your FIB extensions, you get your 1.618, your 2.618. And then I always use an example for uh, with ETH, for example. So from its high to the low here in the 2018 to the 2019 bear market, you can see here once we hit new price discovery and all time highs, we actually hit the 3.618. So if FLR were to do something similar, then if we were to hit the 3.618, that would bring us up to 28 cents. And if we just do something conservative, like the 1.618 or the 2.618, which is very doable in my opinion, that would bring us anywhere from 13 cents to 20 cents. I'm basically gonna be holding this one until a, a very long time from now, probably until at least a dollar. I, I won't be selling any of my FLR other than the airdrops that I get each month. I usually sell those for XRP because it's free, but I'm still gonna be holding my core position on FLR till at least you know close to a dollar, I would say. I'm not selling that anytime soon. And uh, we know that FLR is going to bring F assets soon to uh, these different networks that don't allow smart contracts. So think of your XRPs, your Dogecoins, your Bitcoins. Um, I think Litecoin is going to be on there as well. So essentially, this is going to bring uh, smart contract functionality to those to those blockchains that don't already have that feature and functionality. So I'm very bullish on Flare for the long term. Obviously, these airdrops each month are hurting the tokenomics, right? That's adding more supply and that's hurting demand and it's hurting price. But eventually, we're going to start to see that wane. And we're already seeing, even with the airdrops happening every month, look at what's happening over the last few months. I mean, realistically, we're just on fire here. Over the last five months, since the low of October, we are now up on FLR 430% roughly. So very bullish on this name. Like I said, it's looking really, really good. We're very close to hitting that ascending triangle target. Once we get to that four and a half, five cent mark, I think that's when we're probably going to top out. But you never know. Things get pretty nutty uh, with some of these altcoins and especially with how beaten down we've been. You know, maybe we go to seven cents, maybe we go to 10 cents and then we see a 30, 40% correction, right? So personally, I'm not too worried. I'm not going to be selling it anytime soon other than, you know, the airdrop that I get. Like I said, I'm going to be keeping my core position, but wouldn't be surprised if we hit four and a half cents here. It could even happen today, but maybe this weekend, uh, stock market closed fairly strong. So we got the runway here this weekend to, uh, for all systems go. And I think we could continue to see more upside in the, into this weekend, but very bullish on FLR, very bullish on these utility tokens, right? Uh, no utility equals no value. So very bullish on, you know, your XRPs, your XLMs, your algos, your H bars, your chain links, your FLRs. So very big, very bullish on Flare as well. So going into there, it's Rob with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth. If you found this video helpful, you can smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. If you think I earned it today, I would appreciate it. Share the video with your network. Going into there, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend ahead. And we shall see you again on the next video.